Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're going to be playing some, uh, The Lost Heir of the Fall of Daria. I should probably stop eating just for a second. Um, so, previously, we have played, um, a few different games that are this style. If you guys haven't seen those, uh, feel free to check them out. I've done three of them on my channel. I did, uh, Champion of the Gods by Jonathan Volucas, uh, Choice of Robots by Kevin Gold PhD, and then uh, Choice of the Pirate by Elena Jolie Abbott. And today we are going to go ahead and start playing something from. It's pretty much the same thing. It's made using the same engine, but these are actually called uh, hosted games on Steam. So they've got the choice of games and they've got the hosted games. I found these. I downloaded a few of them. I added a few others to my wish list uh, just to make sure I could keep track of them. And uh, um, if these work out well, I'll go ahead and do those ones too. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and start playing The Lost Air, The Fall of Daria. There are two more in this series. And then there's another one that I actually I started recording. I did like maybe an hour and a half into it, and I just didn't like the story. It was a little too close to home while I was in college and the way that everything was going. I ended up being a little bit depressed. Um, but yeah, so we're going to play this one. It's by Mike Walter. And... Um, well, um, there's other game by Mike Walter, another game by Mike Walter, another game by Mike Walter, Wal Mike Walter's games and Lucids, and then uh, by other amazing, well, whatever. We're going to go actually and start the game. Uh, let's show the stats here real quick. So we've got our health, which is interesting, our morality. We've got agility, charm, endurance, perception, strength, and willpower all at 20%. And then we have skills, which are all at 0%, which I'm guessing we'll be able to train up. We've got archery, devices, magic, blades, stealth, and unarmed. And then we've got knowledge of arcana, geography, history, nature, and religion. This looks like it might end up coming out to be a little bit Dungeons & Dragons-esque, just by like the stats that they have here. But I'm not going to um, say that like that's absolutely what this is going to be. Would you like to turn on notifications? Yes, show me the numbers, no hide the numbers. Um, notifications for... Oh, like if my stuff pops up fast? Like if it increases? Cool. Yeah, sure, that's great. Alright, looks like we're going to go ahead and get started here. There's no like chapter one or anything like that so far, but we might end up hitting a new chapter at some point. I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, it's been a while since I've played, and I'm not sure how well it, the reading perfectly is going to end up going, so if I end up messing up a little bit as I've done with all of the other ones so I mean if you've seen those and you're still here I would assume that you're still okay with me messing up here and there also okay with me taking a sip of my Mountain Dew right now I've got eyes on a better mic so that way I won't be using my Turtle Beach uh, X12s which are well I mean the X12 line runs back quite a ways but these particular ones I've had for close to four years and then I had two sets before that and even before that, there were the ones that didn't even have the um, the male input. You had the the ones that went to your uh, audio auxiliary, and it was actually a female input and a male that went into it. So there was no way to like plug the headset into your uh, computer properly unless you had the reverse of I'm rambling at this point but I'm looking at getting a better headset at some point and then I'm definitely looking at getting a better mic and I have a computer in mind that I want to get but it would cost me about the same as my car which I'm currently still paying off so yeah I haven't been paying it off for that long I mean I only had it for a couple months because I got it right after my daughter was born and she's been in like maybe two videos because I'm not usually holding her as much, she's also way younger than um, Henry, Gavin. I'm not sure if Hope has ever been in too many of my videos, but then Xander, I know he uh, came and napped on my lap a lot while I was uh, recording for a bunch of different things. Anyway, um, the lighting isn't that fantastic. I don't really have anything set up yet. I'm still working on getting, um, well, getting my computers off the floor because I had them up on my um, coffee table and everything, and then I got a really big TV there in the way, which is fucking fantastic for playing Dead by Daylight. I forget how big it is. I think maybe it's like 46 or inches or something like that. It's a 4K TV. Well, it's 4K capable. Nothing. We haven't put anything in 4K on it yet because we haven't bothered watching. Um, I mean, it's basically like the only thing we can put 4K because I don't have 
a better Xbox than the One. The only thing we can do is, like, if we were to watch a Netflix original that had 4K available. Um, otherwise, I think maybe YouTube, if somebody had some 4K videos, you might be able to put that on here. I'm going to eat another one of these. Yeah, I'm, I should probably not do that. Because that literally just gets in the way or makes it really hard for, to understand what I'm saying. Also, it's been five minutes and I haven't even started playing the game. All right. <clears throat> Enter Zen mode. The sky is slashed with... Oh, also, um, <laughs> literally just interrupted. Um, I had a cold for the last few, day, few, few days. Uh, yes. Went to church. Had a cold for a few days after. But um, I had a cold for the last few days. I'm just starting to get over it now, so there might be a cough here and there with, like, the extra mucus that's still left over and everything. But for the most part, besides the fact that my voice might sound a little bit bad still, I woke up this morning and was feeling great by comparison, and I, I still actually worked the past three days. The sky is slashed with jagged tears of fire. There are, They are like wounds upon reality itself and cast everything into a harsh red light. The land before you is cracked and dry. There is nothing growing from the parched dirt your feet rest upon. You stand with your army behind you. They wear armor. They wear bright armor and hold sharp swords. Although their equipment is dented and scratched from many battles, your faithful companions are at your side. All right, so I am the leader of an army who has seen several battles. You survey the mass of creatures before you. Their number are without limits as they stretch across the horizon. Many of them are somewhat man-shaped, but twisted, as though they are nightmares of what man could be. Some of them have leathery wings, many have sharp claws, and most of them have great yellow horns protruding from their heads. They are the denizens of the demon realm come to lay waste to your world. All right, looks like we're playing Oblivion. One of them steps forward, leading the group. It stands o at over seven feet. It swings a claw through the air, seeming to rend the very air in front of it. It unfurls its wings and takes to the sky. Everyone around you tenses as it flies straight towards you. I don't like them repeating that air. It swings the claw through the air, rends the very air. Sure. Uh, draw my glowing rune-covered sword. Signal for the catapults to fire. Loose an arrow from my enchanted bow. Cast a mighty spell. Command your army to advance. I feel like this is another setup where it's going to be like I'm dreaming about the demon battle that I'm eventually going to end up having in my life and I have to like move up to that point and maybe the story won't actually take me a route where I like I can decide not to take a rune covered sword or not take an enchanted bow or maybe I don't even build catapults or some shit like that. This is definitely a flash forward. Or a dream sequence or something like that. They like to do those that a lot in these games, even though only one of them has. Did the? I don't remember if the pirate one did or not. But um, yeah, it seems like this one that might be what this is. And then maybe we'll get a chapter one as soon as I wake up from the dream or some crap like that. Like maybe the demon will kill me. Like I failed in my dream, and my entire quest is to not end up doing that. Um. Wait, anyway, fuck it. Let's cast a spell. Your words and hand motions warp reality to your whim. Your mighty army takes this as a command and surges forward, screaming their defiance at the otherworldly beasts before them. Magic plus three. I awake. You awaken from a good night's sleep with a lingering memory of a dream fading in the morning light. It's a beautiful room with enormous four-pillar canopy bed, expensive mahogany dressers, and priceless tapestries. Your twelve years of life have been filled with the finest memory money finest things money could buy. As the firstborn heir to the kingdom of Daria, you expect such things. You throw back the thick, luxurious covers and get out of bed. You see that your clothes have already been laid out for you on the dresser. Get back into bed. <laughs> I'm the prince of Daria. I'm the princess of Daria. We're going to be the prince of Daria. The clothes are of the highest quality. Their cost in gold could probably feed a poor family for a month. You dress quickly, eager to begin the day. Well, I'm a fucking dick. I acknowledge the fact that my clothes could buy a poor family dinner for a month. Maybe I, maybe I paid the poor family for the clothes and they ate for a month. Or maybe they just starved to death like that dude and chick, or the, the dude and the little girl from Game of Thrones. Yeah. Whatever. Next to your clothing is your prized possession. A spell book, a holy symbol, a sword, a set of lockpicks, a beautiful bow and quiver of arrows, or a masterfully crafted lute. Um, 
I'm just going to say like my last 12 years of life because it's it's telling me to pick this. I'm assuming that it would be like whatever I was interested in and I would definitely definitely love some spell book. Although what is what would the holy increase? Unarmed? Maybe the loot would I don't know what the holy symbol would do. But I suppose my prized possession would definitely have to be my spell book. The tome is thick and bound in leather. It's full of runes and incantations. This is no child's toy. It is a book of true magic. Although magical study is expected of you, you have taken it far more seriously than anyone would have expected. The result is that your personal grimoire is filled with more advanced, is, is far more advanced than a child of twelve should be capable of. You slip the book into a specially made holder on your belt before stepping out of your bedroom. Arcana plus 10, magic plus 20, and gain spellbook. Cool, so that's going to be an item then? Will it? Specialized training, inventory, a spellbook. Okay, cool. So I've got magic 23, and my arcana knowledge is increased. Okay. The halls are already bustling with servants as they carry things from one end of the castle to the other. You make your way through the corridors instead of taking a private route, eager to meet up with your friend before your full day of lessons and tutoring begins. The servants have places to be, and the sheer number of them clogs the passages. Push your way through the halls. You are very strong for your age. Smile at the servants, causing them to step aside. You are a charming individual. Step around the servants. You have a good eye for noticing where the gaps are. Gracefully dodge the servants. You are very agile and light on your feet. Force the servants to part by your very presence. You watch the patterns of traffic and step smoothly into the flow. You are very smart. Okay, um... I'm gonna go ahead and tell a story here. Oh, great. Story time! Yay! <clears throat> anyway, um... When I used to be taken to church and they like let out the assembly and stuff like that, my mom always wanted to sit near the front, which meant that when I wanted to get the heck out of there or go play on the playground while she took like an hour and a half talking to everybody about random stuff and this one lady about the fact that she would iron his shirts like once a month or something like that, I would just like, it, it, it was a mix of like agility and like, it was like watching Wipeout but having the person like, know everything anyway I like I I would watch where they were where they were going and then I would like squeeze through legs and shit like that when I was like I don't know maybe seven so um, although I am a very charming individual and I would like to increase the stats for that that's not how I would probably have the servants move I would probably pay attention to where they are and just go right through them so uh, I'm going to watch the patterns of traffic and get through. All right, so my mind is sharp, allowing me to move at ease down the busy hall without having to push or dodge. I get plus five to nature and plus five to arcana. Or arcana. Ar uh, arcana. Yes, arcarnivore. I am very carnivorous, and that's what this game is telling me. I, it, I have a carnivorous nature, and I got plus five to both. It doesn't take long as you work your way through the castle, noticing as you do that it seems even busier than normal. Perhaps something interesting is happening that you haven't heard about yet. No matter. Your friend is waiting for you, so you hurry along your way. Visit Petra, the young noble girl who is visiting. Visit Peter, the young noble boy who is visiting. Visit Gail, the cook's daughter, or visit Gil, the cook's son. Um... I'm not entirely sure what this is supposed to actually be deciding, but I feel like if I was there... If, if I do know all four of these people which this is this is giving me the option of knowing them. I've probably talked quite a bit with the first two. Probably don't give a shit about Peter. And then, I don't know, I feel like Petra would probably, even though it's the name of that hag from Skyrim, I would probably want to be talking to Petra. I don't know if that's my friend or what, but I'm going to go ahead and go visit her. Petra and her family have been living in the castle for nearly a year now, but her official status is still a visitor. You hurry up the rooftop gardens, knowing that she will likely be there. As you approach, you see that you're correct. Petra has light brown hair that falls softly in curls above her shoulders. Across her shoulders. Blech. Her face is gently dusted with freckles, and her bright green eyes always seem intensely interested in whatever currently holds her attention. She is tall for her age, and most people would consider her to be attractive. She will likely grow up to be a beautiful woman. 
Uh, even at 12, you can appreciate her beauty and find yourself attracted to girls. Uh, you find her fascinating and likely would continue to feel that way, even if she were a boy. Even at 12, you've noticed that you're attracted to both boys and girls. Although she is beautiful, even at 12, you've noticed that you're more attracted to boys than girls. Boy or girl, you find yourself desiring neither, and this doesn't change as you grow older. Uh, we'll go ahead and say that I d really don't desire either. You slept in, Petra says with a grin. That was the nice thing about being friends with the noble. Your rank rarely got in the way. In fact, she sometimes even called you by your given name. Zane, Orlando, Rufus, Bill, Joshua, none of these. I'll choose my own. Alright, let's go ahead and give me my name. My name is Ben. Ben, did you see the riders? She asked. Riders? You question. No, I just got up here. Who's here? I don't know. I heard that a group of 50 men arrived just before dawn. Your parents have already granted them an audience for later this afternoon. Fifty? You exclaim. And they've already been granted an audience? They must be important. A special banquet in their honor is getting set up too, Petra says. Even an exciting event like visitors isn't enough to change your plans, though. Petra is ready to go. Practice fencing as you do most mornings. Practice archery as you do most mornings. Read stories of magic and mythical monsters as you do most mornings. Play in the King's Wood as you do most mornings. Um... Honestly, I would probably prefer archery just because I absolutely hate reading. Reading stories, I hate. I mean, reading magic, I don't imagine that would be fun with another person. That's more of like a night by yourself sort of thing. Like you go through, you read the magical incantations, you learn how to like summon up the the visage of a woman who's way too old to be bothering with me, but I mean, since I'm just summoning the image of her, she can't say anything. It's, it's like, like arcane, uh, adult movie sort of thing. Yeah. So we'll practice archery with Petra. Uh, you and Petra both have expensive bows and well-made arrows available to you for, <laughs> available for you to use. The archery range is near the garden, and your instructor has already prepared everything before you arrive. Archery is a respectable pastime that both of your parents encourage. Archery plus ten. An hour and many arrows later, a servant arrives with a tray of breakfast. Various fruits, oats, honey, and fresh juices have been prepared for your pleasure. Oh, that sounds fabulous. You lay your bow down and stand near the tray as it's placed on the portable table. Petra takes some of the food and begins to eat. The breakfast slowly begins to disappear as you fill your stomachs. Oh, that sounds great. Fresh juices, oats and honey, oh, and fruits too. Hopefully they're ripe. I hate it when people are like, hey, do you like pears? And I'm like, yeah, and they hand me like the least ripe pear in existence, and I'm just like, what the fuck is this stupid thing supposed to be? I could go bowling with it. It's so hard. Ask, what do you want to do? Say kindly, you're smart. You'll be great at looking after your parents' estate. Say wisp wispishly. Uh, what's there to think about? You'll just sit around while your estate managers do... Oh, wait, blah, 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 blah. I didn't read her actual thing because I was busy thinking about food. Um, Mom says I should start thinking about my future, Petra says between bites. Ask, what do you want to do? Say kindly, you're smart. You'll be great at looking after your parents' estates. Say, say wispishly. I can't even fuck it. Wispishly. There we go. What's there to think about? You'll just sit around while your estate managers do all the work anyway. Uh, let's ask her what she wants to do. I don't know, Petra says with a shrug. My parents want me to help manage the estates, but I don't know if I want that life. Sometimes I wonder what it would be like to have my own life. Oh, wait, it's a different paragraph. Yeah, but it's still her. Sometimes I wonder what it would be like to live my own life, she adds, away from the castle and everything. Every 12-year-old in the world has probably had sa the same ideas, regardless of background and personal situation. I have to go, Petra finally says as she props up the la pops a last morsel of food into her mouth. I have lessons with my tutor. Oh, are they moving out? Is that what all the crap is being moved for? Are we, like, giving them stuff for some reason? I mean, we're... We're both considered, like, nobles. But is, is she considered higher than I am on the scale? Or me? Who's higher up here? Are we, like, kind of the same? Whatever. You also have lessons and should have left several minutes ago. Harmon, your tutor, will probably be anxious because you're running late. You hurry off to the library, giving Petra a quick wave before you go. When you arrive at the library, Harmon is waiting for you. There are many books placed across the table in front of him. As a prince, you are expected to be well-versed in politics, economics, history, geography, heraldry, spellcraft, and religion. In addition to your academic studies, you have been taught to ride, hunt, play musical instruments, speak eloquently, and dance. 
Yes, salsa like a motherfucker. Your academic studies are your favorite. Your music, diplomacy, and dance classes are your favorite. You don't care for any of your studies, preferring to do something physical instead. Um, diplomacy, I would not mind studying, but I cannot dance for the life of me. We did like a fake Zumba class one time, and everybody was getting into it and having fun, and I like... I messed up like every other move that I was doing and after like five minutes of the 45 minute long class I was just like fuck this I'm not dancing I look like a goddamn fool and fuck academic studies goddamn I'd rather do something physical let's go to gym beat your ass in the mile Harmon waits patiently as you slowly open the books in front of you agility plus 10 endurance plus 10 and strength plus 10 you're very good but I'm assuming he's an old guy you're very good Ben Harmon says after several hours of study. Now tell me what you know of the consortium. <clears throat> say demon whisper demon worshippers say their compound is in Vernex, a city in the north. Say you're the teacher, now stop being lazy and do your job. Uh let's make something up. A group of weavers, coopers, and chandlers, you say. Making it up as you go. They work outside the usual guild system, allowing them to set lower prices. Charm plus three. Oh, yes. I want to be charming. Wait, is was that one of my stats? Oh, yeah, I've got charm. Yeah, I want to get my charm up. Damn. Is that my... Was that my only thing to get charm? Oh, no, because I was going to smile at the people, but I was... I got my uh, agility up instead, I think. I don't know. All right. Uh, no, Harmon says, temporarily distracted by your words. The Consortium of Planewalkers is a group of mages who believe that the demon summoning should be allowed across the land. They believe that demon labor should be used without regulation. Is this actually connected to Choice of the Deathless? I know I haven't done that, but there are demons in that, and it's it's all about like managing them and making sure they don't step out of line. It's basically like R.I.P.D., if you guys have ever seen that movie. But, like, rather than just sending them back, if they're doing all right, you leave them alone. Uh, listen intently as your tutor lectures you. Ask rudely, what's the point of all this? Stop listening and wait for your lessons to end. Oh, uh, well, listen intently, because I don't mind being told something. But if they're just like, oh, yeah, um, your homework for the day is to read chapters 1 through 37 and then answer all the questions in the book even though there's 180 chapters and I don't want you to read those. Just answer questions you don't know the answers to. You are a diligent student and you listen eagerly. Arcana plus one. Uh, this is him. We have been graced with a large contingent from the consortium, Harmon explains. They will be presenting their arguments to your parents once more. As you know, the law restricts demon summoning and leaves its practice in the hands of those who are, academ who are ac academy trained. Uh, this is still him. Oh yeah, duh. Of course I can tell it's still him, because the the quotes don't end at that paragraph. Because you see, trained doesn't end. So then the next one is still him. I I don't know why I didn't notice that before. Uh, demons live in a separate plane, accessible only by magic. Through a combination of summoning and control, they can be brought into our world and forced to do the caster's bidding. But, if the demon wins this contest of wills, it gains control of the caster. Which... Of course, would be really hard to tell if the caster, because the the caster could literally be like, oh yeah, I'm going to tell the demon to go do this, but it's actually the demon telling the caster to tell the demon to go do that, and then the demon wants to do it anyway. If anything else, just to prove that it's, or to prove that it's uh, following the captor, caster. Demons have strange moods. Some will just talk to their captives, but many have perverse and cruel tastes. Many of the poor conjurers mutilate themselves or attack others. Weaker demons can only control a person for a few minutes, but stronger demons can keep control for hours or even days. Luckily, this possession is very obvious to anyone seeing it. The mage's actions are very stiff and awkward as the wizard attempts to regain control. Alexander Zuzak is a high-ranking member of the consortium. I hope that you attend court this afternoon and hear your parents' reactions for yourself. That's enough for today. I'll see you tomorrow, Ben. Wow, I can't wait until they summon a ton of demons in the court and then kill my family, and I have to run away and then become the lion that Timon and Pumbaa are going to rape me. And then I come back and I kill everything. Say thank you, Harmon. Say okay, bye. Say thank the gods it's over. You're a real blowhole. 
I'm sorry, I'm I'm not the religious type. I would have to be doing a role playing in order to actually like go the religious route. I'll leave without saying anything and hurry on your way. I'll say thanks to Harmon. Harmon smiles and nods to you as you leave. Charm plus one. Fuck oh, yeah, I'm charming. You make your way through the halls to your family's private chambers. As you enter, you see your parents sitting side by side at the table. King Brand is strong and fit for his age. His short beard is white, and his eyes are intense as he laughs at a joke your mother made. Queen Jade... Oh, so it's Queen Jade and King Brand. Pretty strong names. Although, I'm not sure if I'd like it being King Brand. I mean, if he was Vigar, maybe it'd be a little bit better, personally. And then, like, I don't know, Queen Annie or something like that. Whatever had been a real beauty in her youth, and her good looks have matured into a stately grace as she is aged. So she's Catelyn Stark. Okay. Ben! Your father calls as you enter. Old Harmon kept you late, I see. No matter. Grab some food and come with us to the throne room. You look at the finished meal in front of them and realize that Harmon must have kept you past the lunch bell, probably for having arrived late. Together, the three of you start walking down the hall as the servants fill a plate to bring you, you uh, to bring along for you to eat. <clears throat> you were up early, your father says with a smile as you walk. What were you doing? <laughs> oh boy, if you could see Petra. No. Uh, reply honestly, playing with Petra. Say, oh, you know, the usual fighting dragons, rescuing princesses, and showering the commoners with gold. Uh, lie, say, studying the tax code. Say, actually, I could, I wouldn't mind studying the tax code. But, I mean, like, regular study, history, and geography, I couldn't care less. Uh, say petulantly, if you spent more time with me, you would already know. Snap at him, what I choose to do with my free time is my own business. Uh, we'll say that I was playing with Petra. That's nice, your mother says. She is so far from home, it's good that you're helping her to feel welcome. The courtroom is already filled as you and your parents enter. You can see a man with a neatly trimmed goatee and very expensive purple clothing standing off to the side. Another man, large and muscular, stands next to him with a pair of axes on his belt. Weapons are allowed for special guests, although most choose to come before their monarch unarmed. The two men seem to be polar opposites. The short, well-dressed man seems daintly and precise in his bright clothing, whereas the Axeman is nearly two feet taller, a hundred pounds heavier, and wearing dark clothing. Uh, can we just take the axes away? Thanks. The third member of the trio is a woman with straight red hair and a short sword on her belt. Her eyes have highly intelligent ha have a highly intelligent look as she watches everyone around her. A servant hands you your plate of food, and a herald intones your various titles and ranks to those assembled. Welcome to Tornassa, your father says from his throne. We are pleased to have such a highly esteemed member of the consortium with us today. The man wearing a bright purple cloak steps forward and bows, flashing you and your parents a smile filled with perfect white teeth. Thank you, your majesties. Now, what am I going to give? I feel like he's a little bit of a tricksy sort of guy. The breaching protocol causes the herald to pause momentarily. But he quickly resumes his role. The man hadn't even waited to be introduced. Um, who is this? Oh, this is just the Herald? May I present Alexander Zuzak, High Chancellor of the Consortium of Planeswalkers. Sit quietly and respectfully laugh out loud at the dandy in purple. Uh, we're going to sit quietly, thanks. I appreciate... Uh, yeah, I appreciate your hospitality, Your Majesty, he says to your father the official ruler of Daria. Although your mother is often consulted during difficult decisions, the royal line has always been passed down from father to son, making your father the most important person in the room. Let me save you some time, your father says. I must tell you that I have no intention of lifting the ban on demon summoning. The boundary must be protected, and such power isn't safe in the average person's hands. The kingdom of Daria will continue to leave the regulation of the arts in the hands of the academy. Zuzak smiles at these words. I suppose that all of the standard arguments, including free labor and equality in the hands of those without ranks, won't sway your opinion. I'm afraid not, your father says with a diplomatic smile of his own. Very well. Thank you for allowing me to, prevent, to present my views. I trust that you'll stay for the banquet we're holding in honor of the consortium. Naturally, Zuzak replies with a greasy smile. Ben, your father says, why don't you go have some fun before the banquet? I'll pass word to your other tutors that you're free from lessons for the day. Eager to be out of the court and away from the tutors, you nod your thanks and rush out. Holding your plate of lunch in your hands, you don't 
holding a plate of lunch in your hands, that's part of the, that, that was a comma, not the actual thing, god damn it. Uh, you don't bother trying to find Petra, knowing she didn't get the day off and will be busy with her own lessons all afternoon. All right, let me go ahead and reread real quick um, what he said. So, uh, continue to leave the regulations. I suppose that all of the standard arguments, including free labor and equality, the hands of those without ranks won't sway your opinion. Okay. So they feel like pe regular people aren't equal because they don't have, we don't allow them to summon demons. Only people whose wills have actually been tested and proven and able to summon proper demons. Okay. Um, I mean, he smiled at my father saying that he wouldn't do that. So I feel like if he did anything other than being plain-faced, or sorry, if, if he did anything else, including like just leaving his face plain, it would be that. Obviously, the author, author wants me to think something about him uh, smiling at the words rather than him, like, even being disgusted or something like that. He's like, yeah, I knew he was going to say that. So he was unfazed, completely unfazed by my father saying that he wasn't going to continue doing that. Alrighty then. Okay, so do I want to visit the training yards, visit the dungeons, visit the temple, visit the royal garden, go to your room and have an afternoon nap? Um, let's go visit the dungeons. Maybe the prisoners have some good stories. The long descent down the stairs seems to take forever as you travel deep below the castle. Your parents and kind monarchs who don't use the dungeons very often Oh, are kind monarchs. Bleh. Not and kind monarchs. Uh although they also they are also kind enough to not evacuate criminals needlessly. Execute criminals needlessly. So there are always a few poor souls down here. Halt one of the guards says when you finally reach the last step. Prince Ben, I'm sorry, I didn't see it, that it was you. What are you doing here? Lie, my parents want me to see the prisoners as part of my education. Reply, honestly, I'm bored and want to see the dungeons. I mean, I'd like to talk to the prisoners. <laughs> well, you really shouldn't be here, the guard says. But if you stay back from the bars and let me accompany you, I suppose it wouldn't be too bad. The cell doors are, are all thick wood with metal bands across them to keep them fortified. Small windows with bars let in a little light and air. You peek through them, but, mo but bleh, they are mostly empty. The few prisoners you see are lying on their cots or sitting in the corners of their cells. One man is different, though. He looks through the bars directly at you and smiles. Hello, your highness, he says. Reply, hello, look away and continue. Oh, we'll say hello. The man has long, straggly gray hair and a matching long beard. He seems very agile despite his age. He bows to you and smiles. My name is Amos. Pleased to meet you. Ask why are you in here. Say, guard, have this man whipped for his imp <laughs> impertinence at addressing me with such familiarity. Uh, we're going to say, why are you in here? Murder, he says sadly. I was sneaking through a house when the owner came home. He had a crossbow. We scuffled and it ended up firing in his stomach. I feel bad about it, but that's life. Amos seems like a nice person despite his terrible situation. He tells you about his life as a thief, which was usually violent free, except for that one pivotal night. The guard stands nearby, keeping an eye on things, but not interfering with the conversation. Ask, if you're such a good thief, why don't you pick this lock and escape? Ask, so how do you walk so silently? Ask, why did you do it? Ask, a filthy murderer, or say, a filthy murderer like you should be hung. Um, I actually am really, really good at sneaking up on people and, like, walking super quietly. Like, I... It's you. It's the way that you land your foot, and then you obviously have to like watch where you're stepping and everything. But I can pretty much sneak up on people. the The primary trick is to like make sure that you're directly behind somebody, so that way it doesn't like register on either side. They don't like try to look, and you need to be quieter than the person in front of you. So if they're walking, it's way easier to sneak up on them. Somebody sitting still, a little bit difficult. But um, maybe he'll explain something like that to us. The trick is all in the foot placement, you see. The toes need to arch just as the heel comes down. The conversation continues, and you learn a little about silent walking. Some time later, the guard tells you that it's time to leave. He leads you down. He leads you back to the foot of the stairs, where you begin your long journey back to the castle's main levels. Amos plus five relationship and stealth plus three. Uh, visit the training yards. Visit the temple. Visit the royal garden. Go to your room and have an afternoon nap. Um. Let's see, I want to 
talk to him. Maybe I don't want to go to the garden or anything like that. Uh, what do I want to do? I probably don't want to be training. What is it I have to train? Archery devices, magic blade, stealth. Why don't we just go take a nap? I, I doubt a lot of people do that. Like, oh yeah, I'm going to get some stuff. But I'm going I'm to head up to my room and take a nap. You had gotten up early in order to meet Petra, so you were exhausted. You walked to your room and lay down on your bed, drifting off to sleep almost immediately. Prince Ven... Prin Prince Ven. I was reading Valet and then tried to say my name. Prince Ben, your valet asks, waking you up. Pardon me, but the banquet has already begun. You get up and accept the towel that he hands you to wash up with. Another change of clothes has been laid out for you as well. The tunic and breeches are of an excellent cut. The high crop boots are very fashionable, as is the vest that goes over the tunic. You allow the man to comb your hair and tie up your boots. Say, thanks, Bertrand. It's Bertrand. Hmm. How long ago was this made? I feel like somebody was watching a lot of Robaz. Say thanks, Bertrand, and hurry to the banquet hall. Say thank you, but please be sure to wake me up on time in the future. Say next time, wake me up on time. I don't want your ineptitude making me look bad. Ignore the servant and hurry to the ba I'll say thank you. Your valet smiles and nods as you leave. The great hall is in full swing as you enter. You can see that the long tables have already been filled with the first course, and everyone has begun to eat. Two dozen nobles are seated along with your parents, with the three consortium guests among them. You're surprised to see six or seven nobles at the end who rarely ever come to these things. They are currently out of favor with your father due to various reasons, over taxation of their lands, allegations of scandals, and other things. Okay, so they're looking to take over as soon as my parents are dead. That's fantastic. They're probably going to take over lead all of their own individual places and let the consortium do whatever the fuck they want. Uh, where was I? Various reasons, blah, blah, blah. You see Pedro with the nobles surrounding your parents. This is hardly surprising, as your parents have always been supportive to, supportive to the throne. So I probably want to make sure that I get Petra out of the way, because I'm assuming at some point I'm going to have to escape, pick a route, pick somebody that I'm going to take with me, and maybe grab Petra, head down through the dungeons, and ha help Amos smuggle me out somehow? I don't know. Uh, okay, this is the Herald. Prince Ben, heir to the throne of Daria. You ignore the Herald as he announces you and rush over to your place next to the king and queen. You notice Zuzek's eyes on you as you take your seat. You're late, your father says. Say, sorry I fell asleep. Say, I'm glad I was missed. I wanted to make a good entrance. Say, I came as soon as I could. Say, my valet forgot to wake me. Lie. My valet found a stain on my clothes and had to pick my new outfit. I'll say, I fell asleep. No matter. You're here now, he says with a smile, patting your shoulder in a friendly way. You pick up a spoon and place it, to the, place it into the bowl of soup in front of you. Suddenly, your father knocks the spoon from your hand. Oh, suddenly, your father knocks the spoon from your hand. You look toward him and notice that it was unintentional. He appears to be having some type of seizure, and a small trickle of blood is running from his nose. Oh, sweet, they fucking poisoned him and actually saved me from eating the goddamn soup. You begin to stand up to help him, but before you're able to do anything, you see that he isn't the only one struggling for breath. Oh, shit. They push the food on the floor, yell for the guards, ask, are you okay? Watch in stunned silence. Yell for the guards. He's been poisoned. Your shouting goes unnoticed as everyone starts to yell at once. From that point on, things become a blur of chaos, fear, and horror. All of the nobles are choking and gasping for breath, including both of your parents. You can hear loud screams and clashing swords in the hallway. You watch in stunned silence as dark men as men in dark chainmail begin to flood into the Great Hall. You can tell by their clothing that these are the consortium's guard. Royal guards follow them in, their swords also out. They are not fighting each other, though. Surprised, you see a third group enter the hall. They look to be a ragtag bunch, wearing unmatching armor and wielding all manner of weapons. Both the royal and consortium guards battle them in a steady retreat as the fighting spills across the great hall. We're under attack! Alexander Zuzak yells dramatically, breaking you from your motionless surprise as he jumps to his feet, his two companions at his side. His words go unnoticed by the vast majority of nobles who are beginning to fall to the ground. You look about frantically for Petra, but can't find her in the ensuing chaos. You feel a pull on your arm and see that the large black-haired man with two axes is trying to lead you away from the fight. The red-haired woman is helping your mother, and Zuzak himself is helping your father.
Your parents are nearly unconscious as they are escorted out of the great hall. Two men approach as the axeman pulling your arm is forced to let go as he deals with one of them. The other is a large man with an ugly scar running down his face. You look at him, look up at him from your chair, everything seeming to happen at once. He has a wicked-looking morning star on a, on a chain in his hand. The spikes are red and crusted with the gore from his previous opponent. You can see his rotten teeth as he begins to swing the weapon towards you. Try to strike the man with a bolt of fire. Try to punch the man in the face. Attempt to blo dodge the blow. Do nothing. Well, it really depends on how he's swinging on, on what I would try to do. If he's not in danger of like immediately hitting me, I would probably chuck a bolt of fire at him. But I mean, if he's like coming down on me, there's no way a fire bolt's going to prevent it from smashing into me, but I'm going to just assume that it's trying to ask me for some stuff. I mean, um, I mean, it's either going, it's either working on my ability or working on my skills, and so we're just going to go ahead and try to throw a firebolt at him. Uh, the smell comes quickly to your lips, and you summon a ball of fire in your hand. You thrust your palm forward, and the bolt strikes forth. It catches the large man on the upper arm, sizzling as it burns. You can smell the stench. Excuse me. As he steps aside, dropping his weapon and trying to put out the fire. Magic, plus three. Come quickly, the large man with two axes says as he turns to drag you away from the fight. He moves with a speed you've never seen before. It almost seems unnatural. You are led back toward the royal private quarters. You see that the consortium guards are leading nobles in all directions, and that another group of them have formed a protective barrier between you and the fight. It's amazing that they got to the castle so quickly. Zuzak, the man with two axes, and the lady with the fiery mane, drag you and your parents further from the fight. He did indeed, the red woman comments in a cold voice. Your parents are no longer moving at all, having succumbed entirely to the poison. You can see that their necks have swollen and their tongues have turned black as they protrude from their blue lips. The large man who is accompanying Zuzak stands over you, holding his axe and holding an axe in each hand. You notice that he's wearing a thick leather belt covered in runes. Zuzak also looks down at you with no hint of his former smile. He's holding a gray stone the size of an acorn in his hands. The object is covered in runes, but otherwise seems very dull. That's it? The man asks Zuzak, who nods in reply. The High Chancellor moves removes a black cloth bag from his belt and carefully opens it. A myriad of conflicting colors arises from the opening. He carefully drops the stone into the bag and returns it to his belt. Attempt to revive your dying parents. Ask the woman, what do you mean by that? Pray to the gods for aid. Beg, I can help you. <laughs> or do nothing. Yeah, there's an option of doing nothing. Um, maybe I know something about it. Uh, I don't know what the hell would it mean. Knowledge? I mean, there's no way it's geography, history, or religion. And I've got knowledge in arcana and nature. So maybe I have... A chance of reviving them with some of my knowledge? You see that they are no longer breathing. You pound on their chest and try to wake them up as Zuzak watches with annoyed expression on his face. Nature plus two. <clears throat> Kill him, Thuja, he says coldly to the axemen. They'll just think it was an escaped prisoner. It would have been cleaner if Selena's poison had done the deed, but this will work just as well. You watch in stunned disbelief as the man with the axe steps forward. Suddenly, flashes of bright white fill the room. You see ice shards flashing past you and feel one of them cut your arm open. The three others are cut much worse as they raise their hands to block the onslaught. Through the barrage, you see kindly old Harmon, your tutor, casting the spell from the doorway, health plus twenty. Run! he yells. One of the shards of ice randomly slices through the bag hanging from Zuzak's belt. You watch as the fabric is torn open and the glowing rune-covered stones scattered across the floor, including the dull, unglowing one that he had just added. Instinctively, you grab them as you run past, scooping them into one of your hands as you rush to the old guards, to the guards blocking your path. Unknown to you at the time, this odd compulsion will change the course of history forever. Your last vision of that room is of the bloated corpses of your parents, a vision that will haunt you forever. Gained three glowing rune-covered stones and one dull unglowing rune-covered stone. Okay, push my way through the guards, dodge through the guards, say excuse me. Um, yeah. The men instinctively step aside, having been caught entirely off guard. You burst back into the main throne room, holding your bleeding arm. The attackers wearing mismatched armor are still fighting royal guards, but none of them are trying to push past the consortium's men. 
All of the nobles are now gone, either dead or taken away to safety. In addition to the royal guards, you see a group of older people fighting at the entrance to the hall. One of them is the old knight, Sir Grady. He looks ancient, but his sword is covered in blood. He is fighting like a man a quarter his age, his white mustache flying out as he defends himself. Another is a short, bald woman in flowing robes, the monk's sister Gary. Her hands are a blur as she strikes at the attacker with her fists and feet. A second man, with long straggly white hair and a dirty beard, stands nearby. He looks very out of place, but he too is fighting the attackers with a short sword and helping the royal guard. It's Amos, obviously. Yeah, it says Amos right there. Um, the prisoner you must, you met earlier that day. The last figure is an old woman, Lady Emmeline, one of your parents' advisors. You watch as this slides, as she slides a wickedly sharp-looking dagger from her cane and drops the stick itself to the ground. Her movements are fast and lethal as she uses the previously concealed knife to kill those who oppose her. The four odd fighters have broken through the mismatched attackers, opening an exit in their ranks. Zuzak tries to strides forward confidently with Thuja and Selina at his sides. He is holding the end of his shirt in one hand, which appears to be sagging in the center. Judging from the color shining from that makeshift pouch, you guess it's holding the stones that had fallen out of his torn bag. Get him! he yells, pointing at you. The invading soldiers immediately begin to close in on you, and the four older fighters hold them back, trying to maintain a clear path to allow you to escape the hall. Sir Grady and Lady Emmeline stand to the left, while Sister Gary and Amos stand to the right. Run left, soar toward Sir Grady and Lady Emmeline. Run right toward Sister Gary and Amos. Um, I mean, it's either I'm going to end up leaving with them, or they're going to be overrun by the guards because they're going specifically for me. Uh, we'll head with Gary and Amos. Or, that's probably pronounced Jerry. You run to the right as Sister Jerry and Amos urge you down the hall ahead of them. You look back in time to see Zuzak clutch clutching one of the stones in his hand. It glows a deep blue as his eyes glaze over in concentration. Meanwhile, Sir Grady and Lady Emily ward against the attackers. The old knight holds his position like a figure out of legend, keeping the attackers at bay with his sword. Lady Emmeline weaves in and out of the melee, her dagger striking vital areas with uncanny accuracy. All remnants of her earlier infirmities, infirmary, inf infirmities, yeah, bleh, are completely gone. Unfortunately, it isn't enough. Looking past Sister Gary and Amos, you see a sword strike deeply into Sir Grady's neck as another slides into Lady Emmeline's belly. Dozens of swords rise and fall in a shower of blood, so they killed the ones that I didn't go with, killing the two defenders. Through this spray of arterial red, you see a tall, dark-skinned monster. It is seven feet tall, covered in muscle, and has a pair of long, yellowy horns dangling from its legs. What? Sticking out from its forehead. The deep... <laughs> The demon summoners had finally brought forth one of their servants. The beast unfolds a large pair of bat-like wings from its back and flies over the bloody scene, landing just a few feet behind you and your final two companions. Each defender grabs you by a hand and pulls you to come as you come to the last branch of the corridor. Sister Jerry pulls left and Amos pulls right. Shit, so I only, I only get to pick one. All right, damn. Um, Sister Jerry, was she the... Uh, I feel bad leaving her, but... I mean, at the time, Amos is the only one that I know, so I mean, I might as well follow him. Sister Jerry lets go of your hand immediately, allowing the old man to pull you to the left. The demon follows after you, smoke billowing from its nostrils and mouth. Run, Ben! Sister Jerry command shouts. The, the fate of the kingdom lies in your hands! Suddenly, the old man, the old monk, soars upward as though walking on air and lands on the creature's back. You see her hands raining lightning fast blows onto the base of its skull as she clings to its back with her knees the demon roars in pain and fury as it reaches back grabbing her with long a long clawed talon sister jerry is pulled free by the neck and lifted into the air by her throat her nails dig futilely into the demon's forearm as it squeezes the life from her finally you and amos exit the castle and the demon drops the dead woman to the ground the sacrifices of the royal guards and the others aren't wasted as you and your rescuer escape the castle. You stumble into the night, out of breath and bleeding. And then we've got a thing that says six years later, so I think that's a good place to leave off here. We, well, I mean, technically our choices, just because of the way that it's written, got those other three killed, but I mean, it's 
I mean, they had a one out of four chance of living anyway. So we ended up leaving with uh, Amos. And the rest of them ended up being killed, which is very unfortunate. But I mean, my parents are dead. Everybody else is dead. No idea where the fuck Paige went. Apparently, she's gone six years later, so I definitely didn't catch her afterwards. Maybe she's dead. I would just assume she's dead, even though... I mean, there would be no point if she wasn't in the story later. Anyway, um, yeah, we'll we'll go ahead and be 18 when next we come along. And I'm pretty sure, I don't know, our morality hasn't done anything yet. And we haven't done any specialized training. Uh, my health is at 80%, which would be interesting if that stayed the same. And if I didn't heal after six years. But uh, we'll go ahead and see next time. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I'll be definitely playing the rest of it and the other two in the series and everything else like that. So go ahead and check out the other ones if you happen to catch this before the rest of it's out. Um, otherwise, enjoy the rest of the series. Well, I mean, either way, enjoy the rest of the series. Yeah. And then do the, the like, comment, subscribe, what, whatever you kids do with these videos nowadays. Bye-bye.